Good day, grade 12 learners! I am your teacher, Gerald K.B. Navalta. Welcome to another episode of Senior High Tech TV. How's your day? I hope you are now ready to unleash your creative writing juices with our new lesson for today. Last time, we had discussed about figures of speech. What are again figures of speech? That's right! Figures of speech is an expressive, non-literal use of language. It refers to any use of language that goes beyond the literal meaning of words themselves. What are the eight figures of speech that we have discussed? We had discussed simile, metaphor, personification, apostrophe, hyperbole, alliteration, oxymoron, and onomatopoeia. I guess you are now ready to move on with our new lesson. Here are our lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define poetry, define and identify the different elements of poetry, and write a poem applying the elements and techniques in writing poetry. But before that, let us unlock some terms with this activity. Let's have two pics, one word. I'd be showing you a series of pictures with word clues, and you are to identify the words described. Are you ready? Let's begin. What word is described? That's right! It's rhyme. How about the next one? Very good! It's meter. How about this one? Great job! It's theme. How about the next one? Great job! It's rhythm. How about the next one? Very good! That is stanza. Actually, the words you had identified are some of the basic elements of poetry. Let's discuss them one by one. But first, what is poetry? A poem is a piece of writing in which words are chosen for their beauty and sound and are carefully arranged often in short lines. It is a composition in verse, especially one that is characterized by a highly developed artistic form and imaginative interpretation of the subject. There are various elements of poetry. We will discuss some of its basic elements, namely line, stanza, rhythm, meter, rhyme, rhyme scheme, theme, mood, and tone. Let's start with the first one, line. What is line? A line is a unit of language into which a poem is divided. Example, this poem has four lines. A group of lines make up a stanza. A stanza is used to describe the main building block of a poem. It is a unit of poetry composed of lines that relate to a similar thought or topic, like a paragraph in prose or a verse in a song. Every stanza in a poem has its own concept and serves a unique purpose. Going back to this example, this group of lines is called stanza. Each line of the stanza has rhythm. What is rhythm? Rhythm can be described as the beat and pace of a poem. This rhythmic beat is created by the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables in a line or verse. This is the music statement of a poem which includes the syllables in the line. The best method of understanding this is to read the poem aloud and understand the stressed and unstressed syllables. Rhythm is often partnered with meter. What is meter? Meter is the unit of rhythm in poetry the pattern of the beats. It's also called the foot. The meter in the line in poetry is identified through the stress and unstressed pattern of words. Poetic rhythms are measured in metrical feet. Example, a line of a poem has 10 syllables having stress and unstressed pattern. Then, the meter is pentameter or 5 metrical feet. Rhythm and meter form a rhythmic structure of a poem. Examples of rhythmic structure are iambic pentameter, trochaic tetrameter, and more. We will dig deeper on this topic on the next episodes. 
The next element of poetry is rhyme. What is rhyme? Rhyme is the repetition of identical or similar concluding syllables in different words. Poems may or may not have a rhyme. Those without rhyme are called free verse. The pattern of rhyme at the end of each line is called rhyme scheme. How to identify rhyme scheme of a poem? There are endless numbers of rhyme schemes that may manifest in a poem. But some of the most popular ones include ABAB, ABCB, AABBA, and AABB. Let's see how this works through these examples. These are examples from Shakespeare's Sonnet 14. Let us concentrate with the rhyme at the end of each line. What line rhyme with each other? That's right. The first and third and the second and fourth. Marking them with letters will come up with the AB, AB rhyme scheme. How about this one? These are lines from Edward Lear's A Book of Nonsense. Based on the concluding rhyme, what is the rhyme scheme? That's right. It has AA, BBA rhyme scheme because the first, second, and fifth lines rhyme, while the third and fourth also rhyme. How about this one? These are lines from Anne Bradstreet's To My Dear and Loving Husband. What is the rhyme scheme? That's right. The rhyme scheme is AABB. Can you now identify rhyme schemes? Let's proceed with the next element of poetry, the theme. The theme is the underlying message that the writer or artist wants to convey. Themes can feature in poetry, a short story, a novel, or even a work of art. It is a form of sentence. Example, in the story Cinderella, the theme is kindness and inner beauty are rewarded. Or in Pinocchio, the theme is dishonesty leads to trouble. Those are the central message or theme. These are also used in poetry. Let's take a look at this poem and try to come up with a theme. This is a poem by Sawan Yani. Time will heal all wounds. Everything will be green again. The scars will soon fade away. And dry country will be blessed with rain. What is the theme of the poem? One can be the first line itself. Time heals all wounds. Another can be pain diminishes through time. You may also have come up with your own themes. Themes can be more than one depending on our interpretation of the poem. The next element of poetry is mood. What is mood? The mood refers to the atmosphere that is prevalent on the poem. Different elements of a poem such as its setting, tone, voice, and theme helps establish this atmosphere. As a result, the mood evokes certain feelings and emotions from the reader. In short, this is the feeling evoked from the reader while reading the poem. Let's go back with this poem. What did you feel while reading the poem? Sad? Pity? Melancholic? That is the mood. Mood is very much subjective and depending on how we feel as readers. The counterpart of mood is tone. What is tone? Tone is the poet's attitude towards the poem's speaker, reader, and subject matter as interpreted by the reader. Often described as a mood that pervades the experience of reading the poem. It is created by the poem's vocabulary, syntax, or the use of figurative language and rhyme. In short, this is the writer's feelings on the subject he or she is writing. Let's go back with this example. What do you think is the feeling of the writer expressed in these lines? Optimism? Hopeful? Serious? Those can be the tone of the poem. We had discussed the nine basic elements of poem. What are these? Stanza? Line? Meter? Rhythm, rhyme, rhyme scheme, theme, mood, and tone. Are this clear to you now? Let's find out by undergoing our final activity. 
You are to write a poem with the following elements. It should have two stanzas with four lines each. Use the ABAB rhyme scheme. The theme should be failure is a part of success. The tone is cheerful or motivated. And the mood should be happy or optimistic. Combine all these elements on your poem. Pause this video to accomplish your task. Very good, grade 12 learners! You are now a step ahead on your creative writing journey. Next time, we will tackle more on creative writing techniques. Again, this is your teacher, Gerald K. B. Navalta. Keep safe and see you on the next episode. Bye!